Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today we have an absolutely urgent update to discuss in the realm of jailbreaking following the release of the Pangu for iOS 9 jailbreak utility. Today, Apple has released a new firmware update being iOS 9.1 to the general public. <laughs> All right, and before we get started, two quick things. For those of you who want to win a brand new iPhone 6S, just be sure to rate this video up and stick around at the end for complete instructions on my giveaway, which is actually concluding this coming week. So it's absolutely paramount that you get your entries in now. And number two, for those of you who aren't interested in watching this entire video, for whatever reason that may be, there will be a TLDR, or rather TLDW, too long, didn't watch, wrap up toward the end. So you can use an annotation that should be on your screen shortly to actually skip ahead to that segment. Also remember before we get into this if you have yet to jailbreak and you're on iOS 9.0 through 9.0.2 you still can utilizing Pangu. I'll have my untethered tutorial linked for you guys on your screens now. So iOS 9.1. How does it actually affect jailbreaking? Well, first of all, we need to inspect iOS 9.1 as an iOS update itself. So let's go ahead and bring over the iPhone 6s here, and we're actually going to go inside of the settings app. So just launching settings again, remember this is inside of general and then software update. You'll notice that we have the change log for iOS 9.1 listed right here. Let's get into it. It states that this release includes new features, improvements, and bugs fixes including live photos now intelligently senses when you raise or lower your iPhone so that live photos will automatically not record these moments. So that's actually pretty cool. Previously on an iPhone 6s or an iPhone 6s plus as soon as you opened up the camera application it would start recording and then when you go to take a picture it will actually roll back and keep the last 1.5 seconds of recorded video and then merge it with 1.5 seconds of video ensuing when the image was actually taken and then stitch it all together and that's how we get live photos. Well, now it knows if you're actually intending to take a live photo, so it's just a more intelligent process. And for the second bullet point here, we have over 150 new emoji characters with full support for Unicode 7.0 and 8.0 emojis. That's absolutely huge. So many new emojis, guys. But we actually have more changes, so let's go ahead and tap in to learn more. Now it also states that it improves the stability for CarPlay, Music, photos, safari, and search. So that in itself is a pretty big deal, guys. But beyond that, we also have improved performance when inside of the multitasking UI. It fixes an issue that could cause calendar to become unresponsive in the month view, fixes an issue that prevented Game Center from launching for some users, resolves an issue that zoomed in on the content of some applications for whatever reason, resolves an issue that could cause an incorrect unread mail count for pop mail accounts inside of the mail app, fixes an issue that prevented users from removing recent contacts from new mail or messages, fixes an issue that caused some messages to not appear in mail search settings, resolves an issue that left a gray bar in the body of an audio message, fixes an issue that caused activation errors on some carriers, and finally, as for what's listed here, we have fixes an issue that prevented some apps from updating from the App Store. But we also have a few other things. We have slightly revised new stock wall papers, so the planetary options inside of iOS 9 are now slightly different inside of iOS 9.1, and we do have support for the brand new fourth generation Apple TV and the ability to more easily and quickly set up the device, as well as the iPad Pro and Apple Pencil, but what's really important is what we see down below here at the bottom. Guys, this means that the iOS 9 jailbreak is definitely patched, so Pangu will no longer function on iOS 9.1, at least not without a potential update, but that may not happen. So let's go ahead and open up settings here and we'll actually navigate to that exact link. It's actually back one right here. And what this is, is essentially a matrix or a grid of all Apple security updates. That's what's linked to right here down below at the bottom for the change log. You'll notice here that it is exactly the same thing. And when we go to scroll down, it does list Apple's software releases. So we have watch OS 2 and OS 10 El Capitan, the latest version Version, but what we're really interested in is iOS, specifically iOS 9.1. So let's go ahead and tap on this here to be redirected to the specific security contents page for iOS 9.1. Guys, 
this confirms that Pangu has been patched because essentially what they do here is they list the security improvements as well as the vulnerabilities that have been patched in the latest version. They also credit who actually discovered said vulnerabilities if it's not Apple themselves. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to search on the page for Pangu because believe it or not, let's go ahead and scroll down. You'll notice we have two matches on this specific page for the term Pangu. So the first of which is actually very important. You'll notice here that when we scroll up for impact, it states that a malicious application may be able to elevate privileges. So that's key in Pangu and actually jailbreaking iOS 9. And when we go to the next bug here that's been corrected, let's go ahead and scroll up again for the impact. It states a malicious application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. So guys, this is how Pangu is actually able to exploit the kernel and in turn achieve an untethered iOS 9 jailbreak. So while they only did close two vulnerabilities, these are two major vulnerabilities inside of iOS 9 that will no longer be exploitable in 9.1. Meaning if you update to the firmware, you will be locked out of jailbreaking for an unforeseen period of time until a new jailbreak utility is made available. Whether Pangu decides to update their tool for iOS 9 utilizing new vulnerabilities that they may already have stored, or if someone else entirely, such as Taiji, decides to release what they've been working on. So should you update to iOS 9.1? Because believe it or not, it does contain a number of new improvements, as well as features specifically the 150 new emoji. Well, no, you shouldn't, especially not if you're interested in jailbreaking. However, if you don't care about jailbreaking, which chances are good that all of you who are watching this video definitely are, then you can actually make the leap to iOS 9.1, again, provided you do not care about jailbreaking. But if you already are jailbroken, then definitely do not make the leap to iOS 9.1. Again, you'll be locked out until a new utility is made available. And definitely be vigilant and extra cautious when connecting your device to your computer and launching up iTunes. Now, again, if you are jailbroken and you have Cydia and you can actually install things via Cydia, there's one thing that you can get that will actually block your device from entering recovery mode. It's called No Please Recovery. I detailed it in the video that I went over yesterday. So as you can see, you can find it just by searching for No Please Recovery. And again, what this will do is it will block your device from entering recovery mode, especially when triggered by an outside device. So like your computer, for instance. So it won't enter recovery mode, meaning it cannot update to iOS 9.1. It said that that tweak will function on iOS 9, the latest firmwares, but definitely don't trust that alone. Again, guys, just be cautious when connecting to iTunes. You can kind of use that as a fail safe though, if you feel you need it. So what about a new jailbreak? Are we going to receive one for iOS 9 since Pangu has now been officially patched? Well, Taiji is actually working on creating a new utility and they actually inadvertently confirmed that when they stated that they had intentions for iOS 9 and not 8.3 or 8.4 before they actually released the latest version of their Taiji jailbreak for both of those firmwares. So while it definitely was a smoke screen, again, they did confirm that they do have intentions for iOS 9 and they've been working on it ever since, especially since Pangu released the first iOS 9 jailbreak. It's given Taiji an adequate period of time to actually further test what they've been working on thus far. So we could see something come of it. Again, let's hope it's sooner rather than later. And just like Pangu, Taiji is now in stealth mode, so to speak. So developers, when they're working on new jailbreak utilities, they do not give ETAs and they do not give progress updates or even really hint to which iOS version they're actually intending to release a jailbreak for. Remember guys, Pangu just released the latest jailbreak out of the blue for iOS 9.0.2. No one was expecting it. Everyone thought they'd wait for iOS 9.1. The same thing may happen with this firmware, again being 9.1, and we may receive a new jailbreak shortly. But we'll just have to wait and see. Remember, Taiji is in stealth mode and Pangu could actually have something else up their sleeve too, they may have additional vulnerabilities or exploits that they can use for iOS 9.1. Let's hope that either of the teams can deliver, because I, like the majority of you guys, would definitely prefer being on iOS 9.1 with all of its new features, but just remember that right now iOS 9.1 does indeed patch the latest jailbreak. So that pretty much concludes everything we know right now, and before we get into the TLDW wrap up, let's go over how to win a brand new iPhone 6S. So if you guys are interested in entering my giveaway, it's very simple. All you have to do 
is just navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of mobile Safari and sign up. Once you do download one or more of the sponsored apps you see here in the main section, just ensure that you earn points and you can actually use those points to redeem awesome prizes, including paid apps from Apple's app store and gift cards. But what you need to do for the giveaway is navigate to the fourth tab and you see that referral link right there. What you have to do is take the unique part, what appears after the equals symbol and post it in the comment section of the video that I have linked for you guys on your screens now. It's really that simple. And again, that should conclude next week. So stay tuned. If you aren't already subscribed, click the subscribe button down below next to my channel name. You'll be updated not only when the giveaway winner is randomly selected, but also anytime there are new developments in the world of jailbreaking. Speaking of, let's get into the wrap up. So as of recording this video and as of iOS 9.1's release, October 21st, you cannot jailbreak the firmware. It patches the latest version of Pangu for iOS 9 by closing two major vulnerabilities that the team actually exploited to again in turn jailbreak. But Pangu might have something up their sleeve. They could have additional vulnerabilities. We're waiting on confirmation from that. Also, it is possible that we may see something come from Taiji. Remember, they have confirmed that they are working on a new untethered jailbreak themselves. So that's pretty much where we stand right now. I hope you guys like this video and found the information in it useful. Remember, I will let you guys know anytime absolutely anything happens in jailbreaking. So just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter if you aren't already for complete updates. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.